This video explains the Wyckoff directional indicators and timing tools that we have available here at WyckoffSMI.com. Wyckoff investors and traders have several tools that can help them determine the direction in which the market or an individual issue is likely to move and the likelihood of a change in that direction. These tools were developed and expanded on by Richard Wyckoff and his associates dating back to the 1930s. These tools are the Optimism Pessimism Index, better known as the OP, the Force Index, and the Technometer. They are all derived from the volumes of the intraday buying and selling waves. The purpose of these tools is to confirm the indications provided by the price and volume action. They are not intended to take the place of a regular interpretation of the character of the price and volume action, the trend of that action, or the position of the action in the trend. Those who attempt to use them in this incorrect manner are embracing a mechanical approach to Wyckoff. The market may let them get away with this approach for a while. However, the Wyckoff approach is judgmental and not mechanical. Those who persist in efforts to use these tools in a mechanical manner will eventually pay a price for their laziness. Wyckoff tells us that for a move in the market or an individual issue to continue, there needs to be harmony between effort and result. The result is measured by the amount the price moves from point A to point B. The effort is measured by the OP. The OP moves from point A to point B by adding the volumes in the up waves and by subtracting the volume in the down waves. Our Pulse of the Market charting software calculates every five minute wave of each and every trading day to calculate this OP. As long as the price of an index or an individual issue and its OP are moving in the same direction at approximately the same rate, making similar highs and lows relative to previous highs and lows, the price is likely to continue making progress toward an indicated objective. Positions taken in anticipation of an objective being reached can be maintained as long as this harmony exists and new positions can be considered at appropriate points in the action. If there is lack of harmony between effort and result, Wyckoff traders need to be more defensive with respect to existing positions because the lack of harmony suggests a change in the direction of the price movement. Although these indications can be detrimental to existing positions, they also represent opportunities to consider positions on the other side of the market. When effort and result are not moving in the same direction at approximately the same rate, the condition is referred to as inharmonious action. Inharmonious action can be corrected without a change in the direction in which prices are trending by either effort or result accelerating to catch up with the other or hesitating to allow the other to catch up. If harmony is not restored, there will be a change in the direction in which the trend of the action is pointed. Some inharmonious actions are obvious and some are not. However, there is one type of inharmonious action that is especially obvious. It is a divergence. A divergence develops when the lack of harmony is so great that the price action and the action of the OP did not make new highs or new lows relative to previous rally tops or reaction lows at the same time. Divergences can be bullish or they can be bearish. They can result from too much effort for the result or they can result from too much result for the effort. In each case, the development of a divergence is a warning of an impending change in the direction of the price movement. A bullish divergence develops when the price of a market or an issue makes a lower low on a current reaction than on the low point of the previous reaction, but the OP does not make a similar lower low. You can see this on chart nine. Price made a new low as shown by the blue arrows, while the OP did not. This would show of an impending bullish divergence and a rally. A bullish divergence also develops when the OP makes a lower low on a current reaction than on the previous reaction, and the price does not make a similar lower low. You can see this on chart eight. The OP makes a new low, the price does not, and then when the OP turns up, the price accelerates upward. Either way, the lack of harmony is so great that the result is likely to be a change in the direction of the price movement away from the direction in which it was moving when the divergence developed. 
although both types of bullish divergences favor an advance in the price. One has over time tended to be more reliable than the other in turning the price. If the OP makes a lower low and the price does not, the situation is indicating effort without result. This is the more reliable bullish divergence. The effort has been expressed, but the price has not responded. Therefore, as the effort is relaxed, the price is likely to move in the opposite direction. In the other type of bullish divergence where there was, has already been a result expressed by the price, not supported by the effort, the effort may still enter the market and eliminate the divergence. Since the effort has this extra opportunity to correct the situation, this type of bullish divergence is somewhat less reliable in warning of a likely change in direction. Bearish divergences are measured across the tops of rallies rather than across the bottom of reactions. As was the case with bullish divergences, there are two types of bearish divergences. One is where there is effort without result. It is a more reliable type. There is also the type where there is a result without effort. The effort without result variety is when the OP on a current rally makes a higher high than on the previous rally, but the price does not. You can see this in chart number six. The result without effort variety is when the price makes a higher high on the current rally relative to the high on the previous rally, but the OP does not. You can see this on chart number seven. Divergences should not be used as timing tools for entering or exiting positions. They provide warning of likely changes in the direction of price movement, but they do not trigger the change in direction by themselves. A divergence that develops on one day may widen over the days that follow, resulting in a more extreme divergence providing a stronger warning. Therefore, a position taken on the first day that a divergent condition develops could be stopped out as the divergence becomes more extreme, resulting in the trader being moved to the sidelines just when he should actually be taking a position. The best place to act on the indication of a divergence is when it confirms a primary buying or selling opportunity. A bullish divergence in combination with a primary buying opportunity is more likely to produce a change in direction than either the divergence or the buying opportunity alone. The same is true of bearish divergences in combination with primary selling opportunities. The development of, a, of divergences is not limited to the price action and the OP action. They can also develop between the price action and the force. The force measures the amount of volume in the intraday buying waves relative to the volume in the intraday selling waves over a 10 day period. The primary difference between the force and the OP is that the force looks at a limited amount of time while the OP does not. As the excess of volume in the up wave grows relative to the volume in the down waves, the value of the force moves higher. It may move from a more negative number to a less negative number, or from a negative number to a positive number, or from a less positive number to a more positive number. The absolute value of the force reading is not what matters most. What does matter is how the peaks and valleys in the force relate to rally tops and reaction lows in the price. Divergences develop when the price and the force do not make higher tops or lower bottoms together. When this happens, the excess or lack thereof in the accumulated upside volume over the downside volume during the 10-day period reaches an extreme that needs to be corrected by a turn in the direction of the price movement. The short-term excesses mentioned above are a tool that can be used in timing the entry or exiting of a position, or an adjustment in how a position is managed. The force also provides a directional indication. If the value of the force from day to day are posted to a chart, the Wyckoff trader will note that they tend to trend. This means that there will be periods of time when there are lower peaks and lower valleys, and periods of time when there are higher peaks and higher valleys. Trend lines can be drawn on the chart of the force, just as they can be drawn on the chart of the price action. When a trend in the movement in the force is broken, the indication is that a change in the direction of the price action should be anticipated. As with the price and OP relationships, the price and force relationships are most reliable when they confirm primary buying and selling opportunities. The technometer is a timing tool only. It indicates overbought and oversold conditions. The technometer measures a ratio of the volume of the intraday buying waves 
relative to the volume in the intraday selling waves over a five-day period. However, longer time periods can be used to provide longer-term overbought and oversold indications. Theoretically, the technometer reading of a market or an issue can range from 0 to 100. However, neither of these extremes has ever been recorded or is likely to ever be recorded. A reading of 0 would require five consecutive days during which there was only one intraday wave per day and the only down waves for each of the five days. A reading of 100 would require five consecutive days during which there was only one intraday wave per day and only up waves for each of the five days. Decades of monitoring the technometer readings have revealed that the readings of 50 or higher should be viewed as indicating an overbought condition and that readings of 38 or lower should be viewed as indicating oversold conditions. A reading of 44 indicates absolute neutrality. When an overbought condition is indicated, the price is vulnerable to downside progress. When an oversold condition is indicated, the price is vulnerable to upside progress. If an overbought or oversold condition on one day is replaced by a more overbought or more oversold condition the next day, the vulnerability of the price to a reaction or rally increases. The degree to which the market or an issue is overbought or oversold does not provide any indication as to the size of the reaction or rally that is being forecasted. These indications are provided by figure charts. Although overbought or oversold conditions may develop at any time as the price action unfolds from day to day, those that develop in the prices in primary buying or selling positions are the most important. On the following chart, you can see the price broke to a new low from the week before as well as months before. The force did not break to a new low on either occasion. Then as the technometer started registering an oversold reading, the price put in an intermediate term low. On the next example, the force went to a new low, but price did not follow. And then the technometer became oversold. Once again, price consolidated the blue circle, then began a sustained rally. On the last example, price breaks out to a new high, the force did not, then the technometer registered an overbought reading. Price then upthrusted the previous resistance and collapsed. The indications provided by the OP, the technometer, and the force should be used to confirm the indications of the price action. They should not be used in lieu of an interpretation of the price and volume action. Anyone who does so is attempting to use these tools in a mechanical manner, and that will not result in the desired results over time. This warning cannot be stressed too much. These tools that we have shown here are proprietary to the WyckoffSMI.com, and they are very valuable in providing the results that we have experienced over the years. If you'd like to learn more, take our Wyckoff Unleashed course or sign up as a subscription to our Pulse of the Market charting software. Thank you.